step down into darkness Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of a life spent with you Here I am to worship Here I am to bow down Here I am to say that You're my God You're all together lovely All together worthy All together wonderful to me King of all days Oh so highly exalted Glorious in heaven above Humbly you came To the earth you created All for love's sake became poor And here I am to worship Here I am to bow down Here I am to say Peter and Eleanor Thompson here. We're thankful for the beautiful country we're living in Scotland. And we're also thankful for the continued good health of our family and friends. Take care and hope we all see you soon. Bye. Hello again. Irene and Dennis here. Hope you're all still keeping well. It's been so nice seeing people on these short video clips. We're thankful for God's goodness and kindness to us during these difficult months and trust that everyone will stay well 
in the days ahead. Bye bye for now. Bye bye. Hello folks, Roz here. Hope you are keeping well. In these days when all seems to be out of control, I am thankful that we have a God that is totally in control. May you and your household know his peace in these times. Hello everybody. It's good to be here this morning and you'll see that we're in our back garden and it's been such a blessing to Robert and I this year having one. Isn't it good to rely on God's promises? I will never leave you. I will never forsake or abandon you. Hope to see you all soon. Good morning and thank you for joining us on our online service today. We trust you and your families are safe and well. Our opening song of worship reminds us that Jesus is the light who stepped into the spiritual darkness of our world. As a reminder of this, we've been lighting a candle in our homes at 7 o'clock on a Sunday evening. The candle prompts us to pray, thanking God for Jesus, our constant light and guide in these difficult times. Keep sending us your candle pictures, with a Bible verse of encouragement if you wish, and we'll show them in the coming weeks. I wonder if you know the name of this famous blind man, born in France in 1809. It's Louis Braille, who lost his sight aged 5 because of an accident. When he was only 15, the gifted Louis invented the raised lettering system we now know as Braille. It has transformed communication for those unable to see. Bray was also a committed Christian and an accomplished musician who played the organ at his church. On his deathbed, his Christian faith proved central and profound. He is reported as saying, God was pleased to hold before my eyes the dazzling splendours of eternal hope. Louis's sight was fixed on Jesus and heaven. Let's now sing about that hope in the song Turn your eyes upon Jesus. There the sun of 
Heavenly Father, as we come before you in prayer this morning, we give you thanks for the awesome privilege of doing so. We thank you that it is possible only through the precious blood of your Son, the Lord Jesus, who left his heavenly throne with all its splendours and was born in humble human form because of his great love for us. We thank you for his life of example through the sin-free life he led and the compassion, patience and love he showed to others and his unfailing faithfulness and obedience to you. We thank you that on the cross of Calvary he gave himself in sinless sacrifice for our sins. Lord, we know that we are far from perfect, and that we are all sinners and unworthy in your sight. So Lord, give us the opportunity to tell others about Jesus, and to live out the example he showed us and to be more like him each day that you grant us by your grace and mercy. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that he did not remain dead, but that he rose again from the grave after defeating sin and death by the pouring out of his blood in a once and for all sacrifice for those who put their faith in him. Thank you, Lord, that you know and supply all our needs even before we ask. Lord, Although we are living in strange times at present, with all of the restrictions which have been placed on us, help us to be patient and compassionate with others, and to offer our help and to share what we have with those in need. Although we sometimes struggle to see your big picture and understand your ways and our circumstances, we thank you that you are in complete control, and your will will be done for the good of those who love you. We pray that our lives will be like a light shining brightly and that you will draw to you through us those whom you have chosen. And as we look forward to him returning again soon, we give you thanks and ask these things in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Stories of the Bible Jesus heals a man born blind This is Jesus, who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He did many miracles and healed people of their sickness. Oh, hey everyone! One day, Jesus was walking with his disciples and he saw a man who was born blind. Hey, Jesus! His disciples wondered whose fault it was that this man was blind. Jesus told them it was not because anyone sinned, 
but rather it was because the power of God could be shown through this man's life. Then Jesus spit on the ground and made mud. He spread the mud over the blind man's eyes and told him, Go wash yourself in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and did as Jesus said, and he could see. Wow! The man's neighbors and others who knew him as a blind man wondered if this was the same man. Is that the same guy? No way. They said, no, he just looks like him. Right. No, it can't be. But the blind man kept saying, yes, it's me. So the people asked, who healed you? What happened? And the man told them all that Jesus had done for him. Oh, that's what happened. The people asked, where is Jesus now? But the man didn't know. How about you? So the people took the man to the Pharisees because it was the Sabbath, the day of rest, and they thought Jesus shouldn't have made mud and healed the man on the Sabbath. The Pharisees asked the man so many questions. Eh, what's going on? And he answered them, I was blind, but now I can see. The Pharisees kept asking more questions. They even brought the man's parents in to ask them questions, but they wouldn't answer because they were afraid of the Pharisees. Finally, the man had enough and yelled, mm, what is it? Look, I told you once, why do you want to hear it again? If this man were not from God, he couldn't have made me see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't come back. The Pharisees were so mad at the man for saying this that they threw him out of the synagogue. Jesus heard what happened, oh, hey there. and he found the man and asked him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? The man answered, Who is he, sir? I want to believe in him. You have seen him, Jesus said and he is speaking to you. Wow! Yes, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped Jesus.
John 9, verses 1 to 11. Jesus heals a man born blind. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming, when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spat on the ground, made some mud with the saliva and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbours and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, No, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes open? they asked. He replied, The man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. Good morning, everyone. It's a real honour for me to be speaking to you again this morning. Quite simply, Jesus was the most winsome person ever to grace the streets and lanes of this planet. Today we would say he was really cool. He had time for everybody, and the common people loved him for it. Notice right away the compassion of our Saviour. He saw this man blind from birth. See, he notices the rejects, the marginalised, the misfits of society. The crowd rushes on by regardless, but Jesus notices. He equally sees you this morning. You matter to him. His remedy for healing the blind beggar was so simple, so down to earth. You'd never really think of Jesus spitting, would you? But he did. Just some dust, add saliva, apply to the eyelids, and he receives his sight. It simply was a miraculous cure administered by the power of the Son of God. Can you imagine the sheer wonder and joy in the face of this dear man, seeing the sky and trees and colours and the faces of his mum and dad for the very first time and walking and dancing around without tripping over things? In a moment, everything had changed. His sightless eyes healed instantly, totally and permanently. That's our Jesus. That's the evidence of his power. I want you to notice this morning the various stages of the blind man's understanding of who Jesus really was. The first level, the man they call Jesus. That's verse 11 of our passage. How then were your eyes opened, they demanded. He replied, the man they call Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. Verse 11. Then the interrogation began. They bring the man before the religious leaders, the Pharisees, who hear the story and immediately jump to conclusions. In verse 16, they say, How? This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. How pathetic was that? Saliva mixed with dust and smeared on two eyelids was deemed to be work. And so on the basis of that, Jesus had broken uh, the Sabbath. And on that evidence alone, they decided that this man is not from God. When all the time, staring them in the face, right before their eyes, was new life, radical change, and immense joy. 
That was the reality which they chose to ignore. How cre incredibly out of touch they were with the needs of the people they were supposed to be leading. But our hero is growing in his understanding. Check out verse 17. Finally, they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes. He opened. The man replied, he is a prophet. Every Jew knew what a prophet was. From the Old Testament scriptures, they knew that a prophet was a messenger from God, sent by the Father with a specific communication from God himself. This man with fresh sight believed that about Jesus. He is a prophet, was his conclusion. The religious hierarchy are still not satisfied. So from verses 18 through 23, they decide to badger his parents, which turned out not to be very satisfactory at all. So they return to our hero and proceed to interrogate him a second time. Look at verses 26 and 27. They asked him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I have told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? <laughs> I love this guy. He steps right up to the plate. He takes on the hypocritical establishment. And in the process, his mind is gradually being opened to the truth. Did you notice that he basically acknowledges at this point that he was a follower of Christ? Do you want to be his disciples too? Meaning, as well as me. Then the Pharisees retort in verse 28, You are this man's disciple. And he did not deny it. Instead, he continues to go into bat for Jesus. I want you to look at the third level of understanding. First, the man they call Jesus. Second, he is a prophet. And now third, a godly man who does God's will. The so-called religious leaders hurl their insults at the man, but our hero is not for quitting. He's not backing down an inch. In fact, he's getting bolder by the minute. That's fascinating, he says to the leaders in verse 30. You don't know where this prophet comes from, yet he has the ability to give me my sight. And you say he offers unheard prayers. That's your conclusion, because you wrongly assume that Jesus is a sinner. Here's what I think. I think God listens to him big time. Because I believe he is a godly man who is doing God's will. If Jesus were not from God, he could do nothing. This friend of mine, Jesus, exhibits unbelievable power because he comes from the Father and passionately carries out his will every single day. And I go, <laughs> preach it, brother, way to go. <laughs> but here is the unfair outcome. They power up and say, how dare you lecture us? And they toss him out of the synagogue effectively excommunicating him from the Jewish faith, as they had threatened to do to his parents earlier on in our story. The unfair outcome is that this dear, liberated man, with a heart opening gradually up to God, now has nowhere he can go to worship. Once more, he is an outcast. But folks, here is a beautiful thing. Jesus was aware of that. He really cared about our hero. And he tracks him down. Listen to verse 35. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. 
Tell me so I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Isn't that just sublime? Now the revelation is complete. Not only have his eyes been opened, but his mind and his heart too. Now he fully gets it, that Jesus is the Son of God who has to be worshipped. See, physical sight was not all the Lord was planning for this undeserving beggar. His compassion for this Jewish misfit is quite astonishing. He has given him spiritual sight as well. And when the Pharisees kick him out, Jesus pursues him until he finds him. This, I think, folks, is just overwhelming. The Son of God values misfits so highly that he goes out of his way to track them down. That's what he does. Has he been pursuing you recently? Have you felt the touch of his hand upon your life lately? Is that maybe even the reason you've come online this morning? I've called it the divine initiative. God, in amazing compassion, pursuing individuals until he finds them. It is such a beautiful thing. I believe, says our hero, and he falls at Jesus' feet and worships him. Finally, it all made sense. The lights had all come on. The dots were now all connected. And we are presented with this beautiful response of faith. Lord, I believe. And the revelation is complete. The man they call Jesus, yes. A prophet, for sure. A godly man who does God's will absolutely, but supremely, the Son of God. And he falls at his feet and worships him. Into which of these categories do you fall this morning? Let, let me invite you to a final song of worship. This gives us the opportunity to express and respond. I give you all the honour and praise that's due your name. Let's sing it together.
Friends, through the marvellous resource of prayer, we have direct access to the Father. So let's seize that opportunity to worship him now. Let's finally close our service in prayer. Father God, we are astonished at the lengths you are prepared to go to in order to reach folks like us. We are simply astonished at the way Jesus pursued this reject of society, opening little by little his understanding of who you really are till he not only got his physical sight, but his spiritual eyes opened, illumination as well for his heart and mind. Lord, would you open our hearts too to benefit from this incredible divine initiative that pursues individuals like us even today. Open our minds to understand that Jesus is way more than just a good man or a prophet who came with a message from God. Would you please convince us by the Holy Spirit that he is the Son of God, creator of the universe, and the only one who is worthy of our worship? of all the voices in our chaotic world that claim our allegiance and devotion, please show us, Father, that his is the only authentic voice because he alone cares enough to go all the way till he reaches us. His pursuit took him to a brutal Roman cross and his obedience to your plan resulted in death. Jesus died for me. Help us to respond to such unfailing love this morning. And like the re-energized beggar, help us too to fall at his feet and worship him. Show us, Lord, that a deepening daily friendship with this living Christ is the only thing that will truly satisfy our souls and give us the strength to overcome the very demanding challenge of a second wave of coronavirus. Hear our prayer, Lord. It is offered with complete sincerity. We bring our worship this morning hour and offer these requests in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you once again for joining our online service today. We hope that you can take some encouragement from what you have seen and heard into the coming week. For today's shot, we're flying over the old Craig End brickwork with Madison in the background. When it was closed in 1982, it was Scotland's last fire claim mine. We look forward to seeing you all again next week. Take care.